Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream Garage. We just got back from Vegas at the International Builder Show. We had a great time. Got to see a bunch of you, a bunch of our friends, and a bunch of new products. In this video, we're gonna finish up all the siding on the garage. It all starts with the freeze board on the gable end. This is the last freeze board we have to do because the other side is already done. Let's hop right into it. Guys, we were trying to film the intro. Check it out. It's starting to rain, so we're huddled up here under our eaves. Now that we're up here on the shed roof, you can see why we had to wait on the roofers, right? Here's their counter flashing. The roof flashing is gonna stick up under there. So you can see how we notched around it with our corner board. So I need this angle right here for our freeze. Just gonna use my little bevel square, lock it in place. Then I can head downstairs and cut this freeze board for the boys. All right, right there. Ah, water's going in my ear. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> squish, squish, squish. Careful up here, right? No way. All right, gang, got the freeze board going up on a Tuesday. There's a stud there, I like that. It's Monday, Jordan. I don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind, dude. Level gauge coming up. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, don't put me on your baseball team. <laughs> Texas is welcoming us back with rain, huh? Safety first. It's spring. Stop. All right, guys, we got this Bosch electric angle finder and we're using it to find our peak here. But as you see, it's kind of hard to measure from this point to the middle. So what we got here, this guy has a little level on it. And so we're just putting it on our roof, getting this guy level and as much in the middle as we can find it. And right there, we can make our mark and just measure to our mark. It's that easy. We took that same Bosch electric angle finder. We went boom, boom, and we found the total angle of that, which is gonna be 112.7. Now all that has to do is divide that by two and that gives us our or cut yeah yeah the angle it's a angle little confusing cut. but the angle cut yeah <laughs> that was that was for the length the first part of that was for the length the second part was for the angle so he's down there cutting and we'll see if uh we'll see if he nails it we got our mark and now we got our angle let's go i'll let you know oh what the heck Yeah. She'll go. Perfect. Right on, dude. All right, hand me that gun. All right, guys, we got it. Me and Rad have been battling. It's humid as crap and wet, but it looks really, really good. Some pretty sketchy situations on the ladder, but we're being safe as always. You happy with it, dude? Big stretch has been good to us. Yeah, look like at all the look at all the big stretch. And then that peak turned out awesome right there. Really nice. Really happy with it. We had to uh, destroy a couple spider nests, but you know, they'll survive. They'll survive. All right, guys, our starter strip is all done. We are ready to put up the lap siding. Jordan and Rad did a great job putting up the freeze, but that's because they had a good cut guy, right? So now we got an angle to deal with. What is that angle? Well, I can think of like five different ways to calculate that angle. Let's run through them real quick. You can just use a good old bevel gauge, right? Get you a level, make it level, adjust that angle, take that down to your saw, and you're ready to go. They make big ones like this just for siding, but that's for the pros, I feel like. If you're doing a one-off like us, just use your bevel gauge. Number two, kind of the same idea. If you have an electronic angle finder, you can put it on there, put it on your wall, get your bubble level. There's your angle. You can remember it, take it down, recalibrate, cut your board. Number two, number three, you could use a speed square. We're at an eight twelve pitch. See that eight right there? Here's my pivot point. I'm just gonna angle that to eight. And there is the angle of my roof. That was number three. Number four is the good old scribe method, probably the easiest. I'm gonna get Rad over here. Here, Rad, can you hold that? I'm gonna get the level. Just got a scrap of siding. 
I'm gonna get it level there. And he's gonna put that piece along the freeze. I got it, bud, and make a mark. Right there? Yep, just right on there, right on the siding. All the way. Perfect. And that's my angle. They're all the same, right? The fifth way is just to use math. Pencil. We have an eight on 12 pitch roof. What does that mean? Our base is 12, our rise is eight, but we want a six inch reveal. So let's say that from here to here is six. These are called congruent triangles. You guys remember that from high school? Of course. Anybody? Of course. Anybody? So what about congruent triangles? That means eight over 12 is congruent to six. I reveal over this length right here. I got the math right here. Eight over 12 equals six over X. Cross multiply eight X equals 72. So X equals nine. That means this dimension is nine on our siding. So if I were to bring my square into six right here, where it intersects that hypotenuse rad drew, this is gonna be six and this is gonna be nine. Do you guys doubt me or you wanna measure it? I believe you. All right, now we have our cut. I guess I'm headed back downstairs. I'm gonna be the cut guy and I'm gonna pass y'all pieces. Let's get this gable inside it, man. I'm ready to see it. Which method are you gonna use? Out of all of those, what's the one that you like? The simplest for me, I don't need any tools, is just the scribe method. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then what I can do, I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna pass y'all a piece of siding and my little drop, that's gonna be my angle gauge cool. for all the subsequent courses on this side and that side. I like the scribe method. It, what if this isn't perfect, right? Correct. Very possible. Correct, yep. correct. Math only works if it's all perfect. Yep. Cool. Time to climb down. Time to climb down. All right guys, we're up here on the shed roof. Our goal this morning is to finish this gable end. It's gonna be super easy. But yesterday, kinda hit a few snags up here on the roof. Down here behind Jordan, got two fails. We actually had three. We were able to save one. What's going on? Well, Jordan and Rad were getting a little frustrated. And when Rad gets frustrated, you know it's pretty bad. So here's what we're gonna do. They were measuring to here for the next piece. They weren't accounting for the overlap of the siding. So I've got my square set to six inches. Got my good old Klein square. And we're gonna make a mark right there. That mark represents the bottom of the next course. So all they gotta do is pull their measuring tape from here call out the measurement to me, I can cut it, it's gonna fit the first time. And as you can see, we've mentioned this before, we're priming every edge that we cut. Required by Hardy, looks great. Can't wait to finish this side, let's get to it. All right guys, we've gone through a lot of different iterations on how to get this angle cut dialed in. We've shown you a ton, but through trial and error and through, and through just installing them, we have found the best method. I am confident because me and Rad are the ones installing, right? So it's, it's been dead on ever since we started doing this. So let's show you what we got. We have a one foot piece. It is 12 inches from here to here. And we can flip it both ways for both sides. So what I do is I'm taking my combination square. I can confidently say that this is the best way. We've got it set to six because that's our reveal. I set it here and I mark six inches right there. Give myself a little mark, right? That's what we were doing earlier. And now I take that mark. I take my little one foot piece and I slide it right up to that mark and I give myself about a one eighth inch gap right there. And now I'm dialed in. So Rad's got his tape. I put my tape against the flat side and we pull to our measurement and whatever our measurement ends up being, we add 12 to it. That is so much easier than messing with the angle at all. We can get our gap dialed in here. It's the perfect angle all the way up. What do you think, Rad? I love it, man. So if our measurement was right here, you saw it 45 and a half, so that would be 57 and a half. Nice, 57 and a half. So that's best, what call. best way to do it. All you gotta do is add 12. Rad doesn't like that part. Hey. <laughs> four. Okay. I got two for you. Two? Two, man. How is that even possible? We haven't given you the measurement for the second one. Oh, it's just math class, dude. When uh, we're uh, done, I'll show you. Fresh. Yep. Should I give it night? Yep. 
Kirk showed up to the booth. He's in the back, like, joking around with those things. Oh, really? Yeah. The old tile saw. Do you need more? Where's that other one? Spencer said he's down for golf on Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah, that's when he's off, Wednesday, Thursday, so we have to go Wednesday, because Thursday is those gnarly prices, right? I mean, either way, I'll have to either work or golf, right? Oh. Cool, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. That wasn't too bad, dude. Sick. Um, hey, Jordan, if you want to <sighs> I don't think so. Hey, looks good in here. All right, guys, we got the back end of the gable done. It looks great. And about halfway up, we really got into our rhythm and really started to fly. But we really started to fly once this distance here up at the gable from gable to gable in was less than a full board. All the boards were full length. Once we were there and they gave me the width of that first full board from point to point at the bottom, that was 127. That was the last measurement I needed from them. I could calculate all these. They're all 18 inches less than the previous number. And why is that? We're going back to the congruent triangle we showed you before. If our roof pitch is 812 and our reveal is 6 inches, you just solve for x and x equals 9. What the heck is x? It's right here. Here's our reveal 6 and this distance is 9. You'll notice that 9 is half of 18. The number I told you that I was subtracting over here, that's because I have 9 on each side. 9 here and 9 here. If, for instance, I had a wall right here, pretend this square is a wall, then each piece is nine inches shorter, but since we have a double peak going on there, each side is 18 inches shorter. So I could cut them all and pass them up. And that's exactly what I was doing. And it worked great, gotta trust the math. Now what you might be asking yourself is, why did you have such whole numbers? That's just the way the math worked out with an 812 pitch and a six inch reveal. Plug your roof pitch in right here. This is always gonna be 12 in the United States. Six on 12, 12 over 12. Plug in your reveal. We chose a six inch reveal. You can plug in seven, five, two, whatever it is, and you're gonna come up with a different number for X. May not be a whole number, just round it off to a fraction or a decimal, whatever you want, and that number's gonna be the same all the way up as you step up the gable. So now that we're in a rhythm and we got everything dialed in on the back end where nobody's gonna see it, let's put the siding up on the front end where the whole world is gonna see it. All right, guys, we just put this beautiful piece up. It fit perfectly, but our one problem was that we are now nailing halfway down the board. So when we nailed it, the whole piece of siding came out like that. Yeah, it sucked it in too tight here. Since we're not nailing up here and spanning that gap, it sucked it in and it looked horrible. So now we're gonna have to rip another starter piece, put it back there, and it should look good again. Yeah, ship it out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what you get, Start Pack. You ought to be lining up the bottom of your siding and the top of your siding, your reveal, with your window casing. To me, guys, that only works if all your windows are the same or there are multiple of each other and like what your reveal is. Because if you do that, and these windows in the front are different than the one on the side, my corners aren't gonna line up. And to me, that's gonna look worse than notching the siding around the windows. In fact, on an inside corner on Jordan's front porch, they try to do exactly that and it looks terrible, check it out. So here's what we're talking about. This is a full piece of siding right here on the bottom of that window. We got a full piece on top of this window, but look in the middle, it looks terrible. In order to pull that off, you would have to know all the sizes of all your windows with the casing, with the sill beforehand, and I just don't think anybody's doing that. I mean, check it out up there, Dad. I think that looks pretty good right there. We notched the bottom and the top. It looks awesome. Yeah. And in order to pull off the clean reveal, so you don't have any notches, the corners aren't gonna look right, and it's gonna look all cattywampus. It would drive me crazy yeah. every time I drove up. But if that's what they wanna do on their house, go for it. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, maybe you can paint it white and red and 
little cat in the hat. hat kind of hide it. Kind of hide it. All right, guys. Here's our solution. We just got a little shim. That's the length we think we need. We zip taped it to the back, so when we put it up, it'll be supported. It won't suck in and, and break and look horrible. So, got one on our Tamlin. Yeah. Let's try it out. You know what? That looks excellent. We marked it on the stud, so we put the blue thing behind a stud. So, okay. And now the shadow line on the casing is always going to be the same, right? Right. Because we got this afternoon sun. It's all about the shadow line. Yep. That's going to be painted white, so it's going to be it's going to be pronounced, right? A custom cut piece of flashing. It's short, so it matches with the shortness of our notch. Blue tape on the back. We're gonna slide that in. Yeah, and then the, the blue shim is even catching this piece, so we extended it. So it's not all behind this one, it's behind this one too. So trying to do our best. Boom, I like that. Nail that, see what it does. Great. Much better. Cool. All right. And now we just have to do that all the way down. All right, guys, we ripped these pieces of Azek for our spacing here. We're just putting them up before we put our piece up so we don't run into any trouble. And that is gonna make it line up perfectly. Yeah, we did it on that piece down there. It worked great. All right, guys, we got our first four courses up. Now we're ready to do all these ones between the windows. It's too bright for the laser. We didn't want to try the level method to get all those in, so we're just using the water level. I'm on this course over here. Brad's transferring it to all these. We'll work our way up. It's going to look perfect. And theoretically, I shouldn't have to move mine. We had a ton of questions about using a water level in that video, guys. Some people said, do you just mark the tubing and move it up and down? No, you never mark the tubing. This is my reference right here at the bottom of this piece. So I'm actually pulling the tubing up, which brings the water up. The water's going to seek a new level. And I'm just moving the tubing up and down raising and lowering the water level till I'm on my mark. I'm there, Rad. Now Rad can mark his side. And right here where I have the red dye, and right here on the red, it's perfectly level. All right, guys. We are home stretch, kinda. Last piece of flashing here on these windows. This is gonna look great because the trim is gonna be black. So our flashing is black. So one less thing we gotta worry about painting, but Brad's down low taping it. I'm up here rolling it. Oh, it's ambitious to want to finish this today, but that would be pretty sweet. Fragile piece coming up. Okay. You can get a hand on it and I can start turning. Cool. All right, guys, we're up here on the scaffolding. We have an interesting cut piece here. Um, we know our reveal for the siding is six inches. So what we're gonna do is measure the entire piece at the very edge here, which is eight and a quarter. Oh no, it's eight and a eight. And we're gonna minus six from that for our reveal. So the, re the piece that's gonna be left is two and an eight. Two and an eight. Get that same distance the whole time. probably tap it down there it is. yeah nice all right guys we are making great progress on the gable towards the street the sections between the windows and the corner boards went really fast i could just gang cut all those and jordan rad couldn't saw them with the geckos just stack them and nail them and went super quick we already have two or three rows done above the windows got the notches done we're ready for the gable in now jordan rad have been showing you kind of their system and how it's evolved but you've never been on the ground with me to see my system and what I've been doing. Let me show you how I was cutting the gable ends. I just made a template, pretty rough. I'd come over here to a board, slap it on there, draw a line, and I would follow that line. As you can see, it's crooked because I made this freehand. But last night I was thinking, there's gotta be a better way. There's always a better way, right? So guess what? I made a jig. I can just put this on the board. The shoe of my saw will follow that. And the beauty of this is I get a perfectly straight cut. It's really fast. And wherever my mark is, I just line that up and I know I'm gonna be right on point. Jordan, 
Why don't y'all hop up on the scaffold? Let's get that side done, buddy. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, dad is priming the last little triangle piece for the final piece on the top of the gable. Let's go! This is one of those moments where we're so excited, but we just want to be done, right? We haven't, we did a time lapse. We are in a groove. When you're in a groove working with all these gaps, you just want to get it done while you're moving. So, because when you stop working, you start making mistakes. So we just want to get it done. So excited to see this front end done. Can't wait to show you guys what it looks like from the ground. And man, we flew. Yeah. We probably did the last... 18 panels in two hours. Yep. Just when we start cooking with our speed, we finish. We gotta keep going. <laughs> Last piece coming up. There it is. Pick up, Paul. All right, gang, we just put in our last piece, but we're not quite done. One thing we're noticing is, see, we want a good shadow line on our freeze board here, but our siding is coming over right here. So what we got to do is we decided we're just going to put a finish nail in each little section to bring it down so we get our shadow line back. Yeah, it's like flappy right there. Yeah. The rest of the board, solid. Yeah. But that's just a little flappy down there, so. And, and we don't like yeah. that. Don't like flappiness. We don't like that flappiness. So... Quick stop. Boom. Pretty. Take that flap. <laughs> flap that flap. Guys, we're on the back deck. It's a beautiful day. We're gonna to try to get the lap siding on the back here. Before we could do that, there were a ton of details we had to address. Number one, we are working off of this plywood on our framing. It's not what we want. We talked about the order of operations earlier in another video, but we are working on the decking and we're gonna account for that when we do all our siding. First thing we did, we had our flashing right here, custom made at the metal shop. We got it put in, got it zipped, taped to the building. We put our starter strip in, we put all our casing in, and we made these little square blocks for our sconces, kind of a similar detail that we did in the front of the building, because we don't want our lap siding to go all the way to the box, and then there's a void behind our sconce. Rad, you got that light for me, bud? Let's show them how great this thing looks. And Jordan picked out this awesome light. Check it out, guys. We're showing you some of the finishes. It's pretty exciting. So it has a lens on the bottom and the top, so spiders and bugs can't get in there. It also shines some light out here on the side. It's kind of like Star Wars. And I can put whatever bulb in there. It's not a preset bulb. Correct. I can choose a bulb. You can choose a bulb. And that's gonna go just like that. Look how clean that's gonna look. Those are all the little details. And then we also have that box flashed in. One more little detail we wanna show you that we're thinking about has to do with our siding and the decking. Here's a sample piece of our decking. I put a rabbit in it or a rebate for our friends in England. We always get that comment, right? A rebate, that's a cool word. So it's gonna sit like that. The decking will sit on our framing, and then we got a little rebate, so this remains flat. If I didn't put that rebate, now I'm saying rebate. If we didn't put that rabbit, see it's gonna sit at an angle. So really important, and this is here for a couple reasons. Number one, the rim is a little taller than our framing, and by the time we put all the flashing, it's proud. But just putting a little rabbit in there is gonna make it work great. Then we're gonna have an eighth inch reveal, and our first piece of siding like that. And this is all super important because we're doing our siding first and then we're gonna slide our decking underneath it. Oh, just like that. It's gonna look great, can't wait. It even looks great just having this one little piece right here. But that's enough of me. I'm headed downstairs to my saw. We're gonna get this guy sided. Careful the window, man. Oh, the window's good, man. Tempered glass. Look at that. Is that a paw print on your window? They're all over the place. How are they getting up here? The stairs. They're climbing, well, then we close the door. Oh. They're scaling your building at night. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, look right here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, for our first course of siding on the back here, 
We can't really reference the band like we did here because we don't have a band, we have a deck. If we were just to line it up on the deck and start building, these lap siding joints wouldn't line up on the corners and that bugs me to no end. And they're not gonna line up because our deck material is raising everything by about an inch. So we want them to line up. So I got the torpedo level. I'm just gonna reference this corner, this edge. I'm gonna reference it there. I'm gonna turn the corner. Rad's gonna extend it to here. And that'll be the bottom of the second course of siding, just like this one. And they're gonna line up when you're in the backyard looking at them. We could pull out the water level, but this is a quick and easy way to do it too. And I know a lot of y'all are getting tired of me talking about the water level. Told you we should wait for the deck to be on before we start this. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh. Nice cut! Nice cut! All right, guys, we are putting our Tamlin joint flashing underneath the porch, even though it never gets wet and it'll never see water. The reason we're doing this is because when we paint it white, we want to see the white in the gap instead of maybe the black zip tape. I don't think black would look horrible, but white on white will look much cleaner than black on white, so. Guys, we are all done putting the siding on this building. And look over here, we only have three full pieces of the siding left. We're doing this debt free, so we gotta be really careful with ordering our materials and try to nail our estimates. Over on our Instagram channel, at Studpack Official, we're gonna be posting a video how we estimated that so closely. It's a really simple idea, really kind of top secret. Make sure you go check it out. But for right now, we are so excited to have all the hardy up there on this building. A big salute to the zip system for keeping us dry all these months. And this thing is ready for paint, but Jordan hasn't even decided on a color yet. You gotta make a decision, bud. Try it. I know you're trying. You're actually headed to the paint store right after this, right? Yeah. Well, that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. Super appreciate you watching. We really had fun making this video. So use the law of congruent triangles, cut your gable pieces, put them on your like button with your bump fire nailer, smash that like button for us. Please subscribe. Drop us one of your awesome comments and we'll see you right back here on the very next Stud Pack video.